All right, so moving on from the input and configuration video, hopefully you've already watched that before looking at setting up your ramp. Um, so let's move on now. We'll, we'll talk about uh, the ramp setup. Uh, first thing is make sure you have the little checkbox for enable, otherwise your ramp will not do anything uh, once you meet all your requirements in your tuning and configuration setup. Uh, once this is enabled, uh, you can select an output frequency. Uh, the Maximizer 5 can pulse solenoids anywhere from 10 to 30 hertz. Um, the larger the solenoid, the slower the pulse frequency would have to be. Uh, larger solenoids just won't um, function as fast uh, as what a smaller solenoid was or will. Um, most of your solenoids will run in the 20 range. If you don't know what this should be set at, um, you can always play with it. Uh, but at 20 hertz, almost every solenoid will run at 20 hertz unless you have big trash can solenoids. Uh, you may have to slow down to 18 or 15. Um, but the slower or the lower this output frequency is, uh, the more choppy it's going to feel lower in the ramp. So keep that in mind. If a, a higher number will mean, mean a smoother feel as you're working through your progression ramp down here on the bottom. So once you have your output frequency set, Um, you will set a ramp type. So this is how you want your nitrous to be progressed in. Um, by default, it's always set at RPM based. Um, that is definitely not the most common, um, but what RPM would do is as your RPM goes up, in this case um, from 1000 to let's set it at uh, 6500, you would start a nitrous flow. At 1000 RPM, you would have no nitrous. Uh, we'll change this to 100 on the final, and then we'll make a, a straight line here. So from your start percentage, or your start RPM at 1,000, as your RPM is going up, it would be progressing the nitrous in until you have 100% nitrous flow uh, at 6,500 RPM. And then anything over 6,500 RPM would stay at 100% nitrous flow until... Uh, one of your inputs that we set up in the input configuration screen went out of range, in which case this ramp uh, would turn off uh, and then would turn back on uh, once all your inputs were met or once it falls back within this RPM range that we have uh, set in our ramp. Um, next would be time-based, which is probably the most common uh, ramp type most people would use, which would mean... Uh, once all your inputs are met, this ramp would start, and it would start at 0% flow. You can start this anywhere. Um, I would say most common would be 30% flow uh, and end at 100%. We'll set that to a straight line. Uh, probably the most common thing is to set it to a straight line for most people, unless you're doing some advanced tuning. Uh, you might do something different, but... Um, so that covers start and final percentage. Uh, your start time, if you want this to have a delay, so you don't want it to start right when all your tuning uh, and configuration inputs are met, if you want to delay this, um, you can set a delay here. So you could set a tenth of a second delay if you didn't want it to come on right off the line. Uh, you wanted to kind of get out of the hole and then turn the nitrous on and then start the progression ramp. You could set a delay here. Um, uh, and also, you want, your final time would be how long you want this ramp to last uh, from the time it starts. So if you have a delay, it would start at, let's put uh, a tenth of a second in here. So it would start at a tenth of a second, and then from that starting point, it would then last 10 full seconds. So it would take 10 seconds uh, for this ramp to go from 30% of nitrous flow to 100%. I'll say most of your ramps uh, are not never 10 seconds. Um, most common, I would say, would be a two and a half to three second ramp. Um, in general, on a time-based ramp, you want to get your nitrous in as soon as traction would allow. So you want to be at 100% as soon as possible uh, and use that 100% nitrous flow all the way down track. Um, for the next ramp type would be throttle position. So this would ramp your nitrous in 
by whatever your throttle position is. Uh, the lowest you can set this, I believe, is 50%. So it won't allow you to spray nitrous below 50% throttle. Um, and then it would then ramp from 50 to 100% um, at whatever, you know, however fast you want it to by whatever your, your dots are here in the ramp. Um, I would think you would want it to be pretty smooth. Uh, that way it feels like a car that has a lot of horsepower um, when maybe really it doesn't. Maybe, maybe this is all nitrous horsepower. Um, but it would feel, as you're pushing the, the accelerator pedal down further, the nitrous would come in stronger. Um, so your nitrous would, would be directly related to the accelerator pedal or the throttle position sensor. Uh, doing this ramp type will not work on a micro switch. Um, you would have to have a TPS sensor in order for this ramp type to work correctly. Uh, if, you do, if you're boosted, you can do pressure base. Um, some people want to bring a lot of nitrous in down low when they don't have very much boost. Um, so you could ramp your nitrous in down low in boost or, or up top. So uh, this is more for the turbo guys, I would say. In which case you, uh, you might wanna have nitrous come on to build boost and then run a little bit of nitrous as you're going down track for cooling. Um, or you might want to run a lot of nitrous going down track for cooling, I guess. Depends on, on really what your setup is. Um, but you can set a ramp type uh, specifically by whatever your boost pressure is. Uh, for this ramp type to work correctly, you do have to have the map sensor uh, set up and configured on the map input on the tuning and configuration screen. Uh, last one would be speed based. Um, speed base is just what it sounds like. You have more nitrous. The faster you go, the more the, the more nitrous percentage or more nitrous flow you can have. So I think that's pretty pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention was on time based. Uh, there is a little window here that says if TPS is smaller than arm percentage then time would, and you can either select reset or hold. So if you have to lift your foot off the throttle going down track, um, this is asking you, would you like the controller to pick up in the ramp wherever it left off, or should we reset the ramp entirely and start back at 30%? Um, so that, that's something you can determine on your own, whether you want the ramp to reset or if you want it to hold in the, in the ramp and pick up where it left off. Uh, so that covers our ramp setup. Uh, we'll move on to our other windows here. Um, input number two, which is most commonly used for a trans brake. So if you select input number two, uh, you have three options here. One would be do nothing to this output. If you're not using input number two, you can set it to do nothing to this output. If you're using input number two to arm the output, um, if you wanted a, a secondary uh, push button to, that had to be met before this stage would run, you could always set it to arm this output, or I'll say the most common would be uh, the disarm this output option, which would mean if you provide 12 volts to your input number two wire, as you would if you were on your trans brake button, it would keep this ramp from ever running. So you'd have to let off of your trans brake button in order to start the ramp. Uh, I would say that's the most common way to use input number two would be for the trans brake, but we do have different options there, so. At least now you know what each one will do. Uh, your first gear RPM lockout. So if you didn't want to spray nitrous at all in first gear, uh, this would only work once the controller is powered on and the vehicle has not ran the ramp yet. Uh, but if, if you powered up <coughs> the Max 5, um, rolled up to the staging lanes, and you did not want nitrous sprayed in the first gear, this is the feature you would use to set that up. So this would keep nitrous from engaging before you ever reach 4,000 RPMs and it sees a drop of 500 RPMs. So it has to reach a shift point and drop whatever your drop RPM is set to uh, before that nitrous would come on. So you'd have to roll through first gear, shift anywhere above 4,000 RPM and it would have to then see a 500 RPM drop uh, before your ramp would ever start its first uh, run through the ramp. Uh, retard output, 
Uh, we have a lot of questions on this. This is not the amount of timing that the rent, that the controller is pulling. Uh, the Max 5 has no way of controlling timing. This is only asking you at what point in this graph would you like the Max 5 to send out an RPM retard signal? So this is saying anything above 1% of nitrous flow, which would be any time in this ramp or any time the nitrous is turned on, it would be sending out a signal on the output, uh, timing retard output wire. Uh, and by default, this is set up to remove ground. Uh, a lot of the ignition boxes look for a removal of ground uh, for a retard input on the, on the timing box. Um, if you have a timing box that looks for a 12 volt input instead of the removal of ground if you'll check the high side driver here it would then send out a 12 volt signal instead of sending out a removal of ground signal so depending on which ignition box you have uh, depends on if you need to have this high side driver checked i think that is all for the ramp type